Um, okay, here we go from Dina and, and Nabli. How can busy working parents get the best unbiased information to help their kids? I think this goes back to Peg's question. Good luck with that. What do we do? <laughs> All right, Brenda, you want to help with that? Well, we can make use of a lot of the information that is a, a, available, and I don't believe it's so biased, but when you take a lot of information into account, you can weed out some of the biased portions. For example, our, your school should have a school report card, and that's a good place to go and look and see how your school is performing in subjects as well as uh, in parent involvement and, and other resources, how your gifted students are faring, how your different minorities are faring. So you, it's good to get a feel for how your child, if they fit into some of those different categories, how they're doing and be able to compare them not only to their peers, but also to other schools in your county, in your state, and in the nation. Also, great schools is right. a great resource for that, to do that comparative type of study. So I, I recognize that she's concerned about that, but we have to recognize there's a lot, a lot of, of information, <laughs> yes, that we can share just through our schools that really won't cost us a lot of money. You mentioned zip code discrimination earlier to some extent. Uh, in Kentucky, we're like the 48th in terms of median income. Um, and, and unfortunately, where $53,000 might go to a white family, $35,000 might go to an African American, and, and 35 or 36 to Hispanics. So there's a big gap. And, and unfortunately, when you look at some of the swap or uh, the benefits it's in terms of food stamps and WIC, the main people receiving those are, uh, are white families. They might receive 70 to 80 percent of it, while 17 percent is actually going to the minorities that have the largest poverty and the largest unemployment. And you might say, well, Brenda, what does all of that have to do with education? Well, I tell you a lot, because a lot of that poverty is affecting other students who qualify for free lunch, and, and some of those people are not taking advantage of the uh, breakfast that are offered. And there are studies that show that when you don't receive the breakfast on a consistent you level, can't learn you, don't you don't do as well in math, your behavior is not as good, the, uh, uh, your attendance drops, so there's a big connection between our resources, between poverty, our nutrition, and, and how things are performing. So those are the things that we can do at our school level, just sharing information with parents, because I kind of think if they know this, they would try to do better. So we just have to take away the stigma of making them feel bad because they don't have as much as other people and make them realize the biggest gift and the biggest wealth that we can share with our children is helping them to appreciate education to the superlative degree. One of the things we're doing Go ahead, Dennis. Is we try to get information out on a regular basis through the progress.